We are going to be mucking around today. I love it. In the Ooh. studio. Awesome. I'm not going to wear this whole time. I'm dead. Yeah, I'm sweating. I'm out of balls right now. <sighs> You're tuned in to the Nerd Network podcast. Welcome, every welcome, everybody. <laughs> it's your host Marcy. Hi, <laughs> good to see you guys. Thanks for listening and watching the Nerd Network podcast. I'm your host Marcy, as always. I'm here with Julian. Hey, Blake. Blake. How's it going, buddy? <laughs> And we have a special guest here. Introduce yourself, sir. Ah, Josh Luttrell. Awesome. Joshua. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for being here, sir. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem at all. Um, so, yeah, we've we've been friends on Facebook for a little bit. Um, we barely know each other. That's right. So, without going into it too much, let the whole world know who you are. I don't even know where to start on that one. <laughs> Wherever you want. Yeah, sure. So, you know, uh, Josh Luttrell, um, uh, Topeka native. I do lots of cool stuff like art and movies and music, and I'm also running for district attorney right now. Um, but uh, you know the the art part of my life is really what has taken up most of it. What, what, an, you know, I'm an attorney too, and things like that. Yeah. Uh, so the, your favorite art part? What what's your favorite part of the art? So you know, definitely the the music aspect of it. Um, you know, I've been a musician for 20 years and. Um, I've done a lot of really, really cool things. Um, so we'll probably talk a little bit uh, more tonight, but, you know, I wrote a soundtrack to a horror movie that my wife is in and, uh, oh, wow. you know, yeah, so that was, um, pretty cool. We are, me and my wife are in a band called Cables and Lace and we are just trying to finish our album, get it released on, uh, this record label that's, uh, uh owned by a friend of, uh, of ours that I've toured with before. And, um, you know, right now I'm working on, uh, f- trying to finish the, the soundtrack to a, sh- a, a short horror film uh, that was done here and uh, looking for, for more work in that. And then also, you know, doing short film stuff and other kind of weird art projects. Uh, I think the last big art project I did that wasn't kind of music or video related was a, uh, a nonlinear story experience told through uh, the little portable tape players. You know, okay. those like old ones. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, so the idea was that you had to have all the, the tapes and you would get this story. And if you got them all together at the very end, you have to press play on all of them because the, the, the story resolves itself, but it's chopped up. And so you have to all have push play and then they would all sync up. Oh, wow. And that would give you the... That's, that's cool. Exciting. That's yeah. pretty cool. That's, that's pretty cool. cool. So you got a, a, a home full of artists. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Me and my wife, we, uh, we you know, I, I, f- I feel like, uh, you know, people put Topeka down for not having anything to do, but we do a lot of really cool stuff, and there's a lot of really talented people here and a lot of opportunity to, to meet with people and create and explore those ideas. You just got to get out there and do it. And, you know, if you feel like there's nothing here, you got to step up and, and create the world you want. Yeah, for sure. So in high school, were you in like in theater class or stuff like that? I was a stagecraft kid. Okay. Yeah, but I, I got kicked out of high school for not going. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, happens. but yeah, I just I was a stagecraft kid, and I was a little punk punk rocker, That's and cool. uh, so I didn't spend a lot of time at the actual school. Where'd you go to high school? To be guy. That's right. T high. T high in the Trojans, building. Right? Blake's yeah, over people. here. Blake over here is at Topeka West. Uh, well, you could smoke at Topeka High when I was there. So yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Topeka man. West, you say. That's right. <laughs> yeah. That's right. That's right. Give it That's to me. Great. Give it to me. That's great. That's funny. Well, sorry, Blake, you're outnumbered. That's Tobias okay. went to Topeka West, too. That's right. It's okay. We forgive you guys. Ouch. <laughs> no, man. Uh, Joshua, thanks for being here. Yeah, thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. But yeah, we're going to get into some nerd shit right now. Damn, that's some nerdy yeah. shit. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Yeah. All right, that's where we've done this I before. Have to ha- I yeah, need no, to I at least it. once. Yeah, yeah. I need to get these yeah. marked, or at least like change the names of them so I <laughs> can recognize which one is which. Oh, but that's great. No, so we got some cool... Ooh. Oh, man. Man, man that that's, sounds... That's quality right there. That microphone is awesome. <laughs> that was fantastic. Are you sponsored by... Man, man. Mountain <laughs> Dew. Cool Mountain Dew. Sour Patch. Sour Patch Reese's. Yeah, we need to get all this. Reese's Peanut Butter Cup. So, welcome. You guys can definitely enjoy that. Since last time I brought candy, didn't share. Yeah. I'm sharing now. Trick or treat. I mean, 
All right, I'll, I'll take. I'm gonna, take, I'm gonna get some, some of your sour patch kids. <laughs> open Those it up. Like, open I'm, it up. You know, I'm not familiar with I'll, the whole trick or treating thing, so I just. This is all new. This is all new to Julian. Come on, Julian. I'll show you how to open the Reese's. I'll eat a whole bag. Sour anything. What is this candy? Oh my god! What is this candy thing? Never had sugar Speak before. Of. Never had sugar. <laughs> That'd be All bouncing right. off the walls. That's funny. But no, we got go- uh, Guller beer here in the building right now. Uh, I don't know anything about it. I'll put up some little graphics and stuff. Let the world know where, where you guys can get it. What's it about? Okay. We can't talk about too much. They're an unofficial sponsor right now. <laughs> about new though. For now. Please. Yeah, this for is now. please. This is fancy. How do you even? Oh man. I heard it's like an event to open this. It things. is. It is. It's so, like an event. All right. So, okay. See the sticker. Play music. See the sticker. sticker? <clears throat> pop it. You want to like pop it pop or it. pull it, but I think you want to pop it. No. I, th- I think this is a late '90s Ooh. game. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Pop so. it. Twist it. Pull yeah, it. Pop it. There you go. Yo. There you go. That is pop fantastic. Bottles. Wow. That's are popping bottles in there. Their network podcast mm. studio. No, I'm no beer condensate. All right, hold on. So, which one is it? You have the lager. Is I that have, what that is? Yep. And then you have the uh, Dunkel, Dunkel, which is their dark beer. All right. First thoughts, it's gentlemen. Short for for, for <laughs> uncle. I don't. Know. Drunk uncle. Drunk uncle. That's what they're going for. Mm, that's tasty. I like that. That's yeah. actually really good. Do I have a sound bite for that? <laughs> <laughs> Stop using that one. That's your go-to one. Don't use that. One. <laughs> Wait, no. No, no. It was the other one. Was this one? Yeah, it was that one. Oh. <laughs> There we go. I'll that's kill it. it. There that's we go. it. Yeah. That's, oh, that's it. funny. Oh, we're, all <laughs> qu- we're all quenched now. I'm definitely burning out. I'm going to need to drink up like more Mountain Dew. All right. So the three main news, nerd news topics we're going to talk about today. Monster Hunter. Yes. Trailer was released yesterday with Maya Djokovic, how you say her, how you say her last name? Djokovic. Djokovic, gosh, she's, Djokovic. she's great. Yeah. It's, she's me, good. it's me a time, that's what I always say. <laughs> nice. Uh, coming to America too. Going straight to Amazon. Prime, December 18th. And the return of Dexter Morgan. Ow. An episode, limited series. Julian, did you know that was happening? I did not know that was happening. Dang, that was announced yesterday. Technically today, but when this goes out, it'll be yesterday. Which one would you guys like to talk about first? Blake, go. You sure? I'm not going to be nice to any of these. Come on, man. All right. You want me to be positive and upbeat? Here we go. <laughs> um, well, yeah, let's start with uh, let's start with Coming to America 2. McDowell's is yeah. what's up. <laughs> yes. Yeah. God, this movie, I hope, is a part of each and every one of your guys' childhoods. This, this was incredible. Just show so There's oh. so many things. <laughs> this is so silky smooth. <laughs> this, yeah. movie, this movie was made for social media 30 years before there was such a thing. Like, this is, this is fantastic. Um, I don't, I don't, I know nothing. I've wanted to know nothing about the oh, second same. one. And I don't know if they've released a whole lot. I haven't heard a ton. There's some pictures on set. And there's, a lot, there's a lot of people in this movie. But I'm, anything with Eddie Murphy... I'm gonna watch it. Um, I'm I'm glad that he's he's getting back up to doing something. I'm glad is Arsenio gonna be back in this one. I believe so. I, I, I hope so. I know they go. They seem. I mean, from what we can see, they seem to fall in and out of friendship from time to time. Um, you know, and so I, I'm I'm glad. You know that they're that they're doing this. Speaking of Arsenio, do you remember the uh, the uh, character, the like the rap character he had, um, where he's he was like. Dressed up all fat. Um, he, he had played this other character. He actually released an album oh, man. under it. Really? Yeah. I'm not familiar with that I'm one. I'm not yeah. familiar with that either. No. I'll, I'll find something to put yeah, on the yeah, screen. Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah. Yeah, that's funny, though. That's awesome. Yeah, I don't know what's, what this second one's going to be about. I mean, from the first one, it left off where he clicked up with that girl. Yep. Um, he stays. No, did, did he go back? Go back where? They got married at the end of the movie. Yeah, so he said in America. Mm-hmm. He didn't take her back with him? No, they went. They were in Africa, weren't they? I thought so, too. Yeah, because they was like, wasn't they like on an elephant or something, like in a parade? Oh, that wasn't happening yeah, yeah, in New yeah. York City. Yeah. yeah. That's what I thought. So, are they coming back to America? <laughs> or like, <laughs> you know, I really don't know Going too much back. about it at all. Um, yeah, Eddie Murphy had a redemption year. 
Yeah, well, I mean, he was just in what Dolomite or what yeah. was that? That was yeah, that was classic Eddie Murphy right there. Oh, yeah. That was that was solid. I mean, yeah. he's he's so talented. Yeah, he's brilliant. When he's not working with Disney, he right. he puts out quality. <laughs> right. He puts out quality <laughs> movies. Man, Doctor Doolittle was great. Doctor Doolittle, but what was the okay? He so, did the haunted house one. Yeah, Daddy Daycare. Oh, I love right. Daddy Daycare. I, yeah, Daddy Daycare. And then um, Osmosis Jones is that. That, that, that was, was Chris, Chris Rock. Rock. That was Chris Rock. Yeah. Right. And Orlando yeah. Jones in that, too. Um, what is the movie? that I Spy? Mm. You guys see I Spy? Oh, yeah, with Wilson. Yeah, oh, with Owen Wilson or whatever Wilson. his name. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, where he's a boxer, right? Yeah. yeah. That one was okay. And then... No, it's Pluto Nash. Was it Pluto, Pluto Nash? Nash? Yeah. That, that's yeah. what I was, that's yeah. what I was yeah. mixing up there. Yeah, Pluto yeah. Nash. Yeah, man. No, it's cool. I'm glad. I mean, he's making money, though. I mean, how much? The reportedly $125 million. That's great. It, he he's still Eddie Murphy. Like he'll he's he hit that. You know everybody talks like the big thing right now is the like the level that um, like Chappelle is on. Mm-hmm. So like the, you know like Chappelle, Kevin Hart, these guys pull in this monst- this monstrous amount of money. That was Eddie Murphy in the eighties, yeah, and nineties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Young. yeah. Uh, well, definitely this movie, December eighteenth. So would you pay that nineteen ninety nine to rent it? Yeah. Oh, they can sure. get all my money. Oh yeah, I was telling Julian this before. Yeah, that, like I, would, yeah, the first day it comes out, I don't care yeah. what time it is. Like, yeah, I drop mean, it at midnight. I'll be yeah. <laughs> by now. Yes, by now, nineteen ninety nine. It won't be by now. It'll be right now. But. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna watch it all seven days. I'm getting my money's <laughs> yeah. worth. Just have it on loop. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So the next topic I want to talk about is this Monster Hunter trailer. Yeah. I don't know if you guys seen it yet or not. And Monster Hunter is actually a video game. Yeah. Fantastic video All right, game. Go into the video game because I don't know nothing about this video game. Uh okay, so I played I played I played the DS one. I didn't I never played the PC one. But anyways, the gist of Monster Hunter is is you are literally what the title is <laughs> calls it. You're a monster hunter, okay. right? So what's unique about it is the monsters that you hunt or whatever, you can later like if you hunt them enough, you can gather like their specific materials, like their skin and different parts from that monster, and build weapons out of that to so go hunt uh, to hunt the next bigger monster. So, is this like in the future, present time? Like, nah, it's like prehistoric because the monsters, in my opinion, look a lot like dinosaurs. You know, so it's I don't know. It's it's a weird mix because you have Damn. guns, you have like futuristic esque weapons, but they're all like very primal. What, what what console was this game on? Uh, all of them. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. I've never heard the of most it. recent, the biggest one in my opinion is on is Monster Hunter World, which is on no. all platforms right it's now. It's got like fifteen hundred hours of my life. Yeah. So did you guys uh-huh. haven't seen the trailer yet or no? Um, I watched it. I haven't seen. I heard it, and from what I would heard, it's not something <laughs> that I feel like I'd watch. To be honest, it's uh, me. Do you know that this video game? I, I mean, I've I've seen like just videos of it okay. o- online. I'm not a console player. I'm a PC person. Okay, um, PC master race. Let's go. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> I mean, it, you know, look, it, it, you know, like you said, it took a lot of hours, and it looked like one of those kind of games that you, you know, you just grind out. Yeah, it's a, yeah. The game is so good. So, since so you're familiar with the game, yeah, like, and you're familiar, then you saw the trailer, yeah. Anna, what do you think? I I think that. I watched a kind of a, a behind the scenes thing as well, okay. and the the care that they put into designing the monsters. Mm-hmm. Um, they put a lot of effort into the to the artwork. Um, I know a lot of people have issues with the director. A lot of people have issues with the actress. Um, from the, a lot of the comments that I was reading, I don't know a whole lot about the director. I guess he butchered another series or something. Who's the director? Do you know? director do I don't know? remember oh, his name, but they were like, "I have no faith in this guy." Uh, bring a, a game system to life but and then the actress i'm sorry what's her name again mia jovovich i'm not a fan really what, Boo. what, what has she what, where has she been on <laughs> fifth element oh what resident evil you're not, resident you're not evil. A, yeah she's he's not a she butchered fan. she butchered resident evil for she me. didn't butch it it's not her fault hey how many how many resident evils are okay. we on doesn't matter technically, how, hold on. how many are we on it's not her fault it's not you her can fault, say like okay i, mean, I i'm done with it like you can yeah. walk away listen i it's okay let me take a step back She's not one of my favorite actress. Okay, I feel like, I feel like in this movie, with the wide range of characters, especially with it being a Japanese game, I feel like Monster Hunter is a Japanese game. Absolutely. Oh, okay. The other char- the other characters in the movie are all Japanese. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, this is a Capcom game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. And then there's her. Right. Not only is she not my favorite actress, you know, sci-fi, you know, horror, you know, whatever actresses, I feel like she was shoehorned in here. Isn't she the director's wife? Are they married? I'm not, I don't no. know. I'm 73% I mean, sure they're married. Oh, no. So, I mean, I, you know, she is definitely not. You know, an amazing actress. I mean, she she has she's no Anne Hathaway. I get it. Yeah, I mean, she she's has no, you know. she's, she's no. Meryl but this Street. this was just for me. This was a fantastic opportunity to roll in there with all no names sure. and have a stellar performance. Yeah. Um, she's Hollywood's so go to. Though. This is this is yeah, like I, a don't I don't I if there's is it a what, video game movie. So this Maybe is like the Ghost in the Shell yeah. Yeah. all yeah. over again. What's that? This is like Ghost in the Shell all over again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's and that's what it is. Like, man, man. there's that hurt. That made me hurt. I, I just, I'm, I'm again. This is just like the Resident Evil games we talked about last week. I'm a huge fan of the series. Um, I feel like, yeah, it was just a go to. Like, what well, you guys have? Uh, what is this? Dinosaurs, monsters? You know, <laughs> yeah. Get get call her. <laughs> right. You know what call I mean? Yeah. I just, I feel like, I feel like, she's not. She didn't. She instantly turned me off, and I feel like that is a disservice to what the movie could have been. I'm still gonna watch it. I don't know if I'll see it the first day it comes out. Um, I'll probably hear reviews on it. But I know that they t they came to the artists of the video game, and the artists of the video game gave them a thumbs up as far as the monsters went. Okay, so I don't know anything about the video game. I saw this trailer, and I'm sorry. I got super excited because she's in it, because I've seen her Resident Evil. And I've never played any of the Resident Evil games, so I actually like the Resident Evil series, so... Yeah, I mean, I think they're two different worlds, really. I mean, yeah. I, I, you know, the Resident Evil mm -hmm. movie series and the and the Resident Evil video games are, I mean, they're totally different. Yeah, for sure. I, you yeah. know, yeah. and yeah, it, if, if you, yeah, I mean, I, you know, my heart was broken after watching the first one, being a Resident Evil fan, and then you just kind of be like, all right, those just are yeah, have the just same have name, separated, and right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. no, um, but like, you know, for for this monster movie, I mean, my question is that you know, you you have a video game. I don't know if the plot is very involved in the game, mm. or yeah, so. so <laughs> from what I saw, I'm just gonna give you my yeah. Cause since since you know what it is, and I don't really know what's going on. From what I saw, is just this group of army military people get transported to somewhere else, and they're in this world where all these monsters are existing, and then they try to survive. Yeah, and they're killing them. Yeah, using so stuff it's, against them to yeah. fight back and stuff. Yeah, so I mean, it's a it's a. They're technically like scientific research teams. Okay. So like a lot of the games, it is they are they look at themselves as managing populations, learning more about the dinosaurs or excuse me, about the monsters. Some of these monsters are they are like continent level, like destructive power. And so sometimes, you know, they feel like they need to intervene to stop them from destroying like a, a literal continent yeah. and so a lot of it yeah i mean do you have research teams you have like um um fucking, what are the people that do plants herbatologists yeah they have like stuff like that i mean there's all these different teams working together so this isn't just a lot of the military guys with big guns yeah and no just not up. like what is that godzilla let's get them like oh no there's like a scientific element that's to cool it. that's yeah. different that's yeah. cool yeah and, and I, I mean I, I think there's probably some benefit for when you're making a movie when you don't have like a solid plot that way you right. have some free reign as yeah. to like characters and yeah. you know i mean you know resident evil you knew your characters you knew what like how that story progressed and if you know if your game is not so, so story heavy that yeah. when they make a movie they at least can you know yeah. you're yeah. not gonna watch and be like that's not what happened and you yeah. know yeah. Yeah. And, and there's definitely the freedom in in this game series is because there's not a direct storyline you oh, know that's cool it, it's just like you know, like in Monster Hunter World, which is the game I probably had the most amount of time in, you are um, you're actually one of the last people to get to the island. And, you know, there's some research teams that have gotten lost. There's some insufficient research that's been done here. Um, and then as things pop up, your mission kind of changes. So they have the free like they could pull a Resident Evil movie series with this genre because there's not a dead set. Right. You know, like in yeah, right. Yeah. Right. Right. You that's know what cool. I'm saying? So they have the freedom there. Um, we'll see. we'll see where it goes. Yeah, I'm excited to watch it. I mean, you poor thing. if it's just going to be a cool to me, it's just like a cool action movie. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah, a popcorn movie. Yeah, you know, that's cool. I mean, my fear is though, I'm I've always envisioned a Monster Hunter movie being that movie that it doesn't matter what you're doing, like if it's on, you'll leave it on, even if you're doing things up and around the room. Like it's a movie that you'll still have on in the background. 
that's how Transformers is for me. It's like one of the Rock movies. Yeah, yeah. Like GI GI Joe is a perfect example. Like yep. you are not blown away by the story, but it's mm. still GI Joe. It's a TNT TBS movie, man. And so, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and so that that's kind of what I is. what I would hope for something like this, like badass monster fight scenes. Like uh, one of the monsters that they show is the Diablos, the one that's underground or whatever. Oh, that's pretty cool. Like, yeah, that yeah. shit is awesome. Yeah. And so I just hope that you, uh, she pulls it off. Well, so, so it's not about her. It's not about her. It's all about the studio and the writers and the directors. Okay, you can't blame an actress. Pull. Can you do one of those things where you slap like comments from like under the pull up the comments from one of those trailer videos? I was gonna do the, the intro song. No. Oh. I, I, go ahead. The return of Dexter Morgan. Showtime. Decided to make ten more episodes for a new season of Dexter. I'm going to go with Julian. <laughs> Julian. You. Go ahead, Julian. What are your thoughts? First of all, did you like the original Dexter? I did all the way up until the last season. Uh, that's, yeah. I think consistently. I think that's, yeah, I think that's fair with everybody. Yeah. Um, but no, consistently, yeah. it was. I thought it was a, a a very interesting concept. You know, each season, you know, I was on the edge of my seat. You know, I like to see the story of how Dexter evolved, learning his backstory a little bit, seeing his relationship with Deb the couple love interests that came in his life and you know everything so i mean it was it was it was a gripping story and me personally yeah i'm pretty excited to see these these new episodes he's quiet. he's, he's going to go last go yeah ahead. i mean <laughs> so you know i watched uh, you know i really liked dexter and i watched it to the end but uh as it progressed i got less and less interested and um i you know i think after john lithgow um that season, I just I started to just mentally check out. It just got kind of goofier and more, more absurd, and um, it just you know I was it, it 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 didn't keep my interest in, in like it used to, and it just felt it maybe kind of dragged on longer than it needed to. I be, you know so I'm really curious about what these you know these ten episodes are going to be if they're going to be able to to bring me back into where I was when I first saw Dexter. I mean, my, my thing was just like, you know, how many people can this person, <laughs> you know, kill, yeah, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's just, it, it really gets more and more and more absurd as you go along. And, um, so that's, we'll see, you know, Go ahead, Blake. Tell everyone, All right. tell everyone why you're wrong. Go ahead. Tell everybody that I'm wrong. Okay. Get no. The soundboard ready for this one. <laughs> so, okay. So, I have a couple of questions first. Go ahead. Are they going to bring back the original intro? The egg and the ham? The oh. hot sauce? <laughs> I Come on. It. Yeah, it's fantastic. Uh -huh. yeah. I love it. The, the put on the sweater and then the, the shoelace. Yeah. Yeah, nice and tight. Bri yeah, brilliant. Yeah, brilliant. yeah, yeah the, no, that was, that was really well shot. That was really well put together. That oh, dude, I never skipped it. Yeah, no, yeah, I've never, never skipped never. the intro. Yeah, it was fantastic. So that song was so good. Um, As far as the show, I'm, I'll tell you, um, this type of show isn't something that I would normally um, stumble onto. Um, and well, why is that? Why is that, first of all? I think growing up, I watched every CSI <laughs> with my parents. It was like the thing that we did during the week. Like, and so a lot of those cat, cop, you know, type movies, um, it was um, – it was kind of a, a burnout, but it was interesting because the cop was actually the killer, and that's what yeah. drew me in. Um, and so um, as far as the show, I mean, the cast um, was, I thought, really well put together. Um, the storyline, yeah, up until, up in, you know, those first couple of seasons, yeah, it was just like, how is he going to get away with it? You know, what is he going to do with the body? How intricate and thought out that he was, the show definitely did their homework. Um, you know, but I agree. It just, it drug on too long. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna bash the show cause it's still one of my favorites. I still tell people to, to buy it up to season four. Cause that's, <laughs> that's when it stopped being good. But, um, as, as far as the new one, if, if they can, if they can bring back that, you know, that original zest that, you know, the, the realism, um, you know, of that, uh, those first four seasons, I'm 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 game. I'm definitely gonna watch the ten episodes. I hope that, um, I don't know how are they gonna bring them back. I don't know. Well, 
I don't want to go too much. If you haven't seen the original Dexter, the, f- the first seasons, I don't want to talk about it too much. Ah, fuck it. We're going to talk, we're gonna talk uh, about it. Well, I mean, we're, you we're say he it. leaves at the end. I mean, shit, well, he killed like 400 people. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, we're gonna he couldn't stay in Miami. Oh, uh, yeah. Right. So, <laughs> obviously, we're, this is going to, I'm hoping, this, I'm assuming this is going to be where we left off last time, kind of. So, last thing we knew, Dexter was out in the, the woods being a lumberjack, basically. Like in Brazil or something. No, he's in America still. <laughs> I'm 70% sure. 74% this time. Maybe he'll just be like an echo terrorist and just like go around <laughs> taking out like a serial oh. killer lumberjack, <laughs> making sure that uh, oh, our parks are protected. That's really fantastic. <laughs> he's fighting uh, some Bigfoots that kind of look like what I'm wearing right now, maybe. I would dig that. Yeah, maybe. that'd be crazy. But, um, which is crazy because I thought the rumors for the longest time that I thought we were, we were going to Dexter prequel. And I guess that got thrown out the window. I feel, I feel like that would have been a little harder to pull off. Because they, they did a lot of flashbacks to him in those eight. Like, I think they've kind of filled in those gaps. Like a, a Dexter in high school kind of CW. <laughs> I mean, yeah, uh, but that's also kind of, to me. Killing I, lab rats. Right. Like, I, I still found it very interesting because, like, the whole dynamic of him and having relationships with the girls and with having friends in general would probably be a cool thing to see. I don't know. I like cheesy stuff like that. I, I, I can dig it. One but thing it didn't need to be. It didn't need to go for like nine more seasons of him being a kid. Right. But you know, two or three seasons of him going to prom, not going to prom, almost having sex for the first time. <laughs> you know, no, I, like, I, I think that um, I think that would have been interesting. Maybe if they didn't put so much into the original Dexter show. Yeah, and it was yeah. so, you would you would need to bring his dad back. And depending yeah. on how long they were going to wait to film this show, I mean, right? He I might can't be remember. looking a little long in the tooth. Yeah, I mean, they could have CGI'd him, but you know how they do that <laughs> nowadays. But uh, yeah, I don't know. But so they're not doing that. So we're gonna go straight into. Um, where we picked, where we left off from him, his son is with that girl, that lady, that woman, yeah. his ex girlfriend. Did they technically broke up before, or did they? Were they technically together? I, I don't know. I don't remember. I don't uh, remember either. Well, I just know he was like take 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 care take Harrison. Maybe she's like going after him for child support. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> like. Oh my gosh, dang! But it's just them in court for ten episodes. I yeah. Uh, Ten episodes. <laughs> what could happen for ten episodes? I mean, he's gonna come back, and his son has to be in it again. Yeah. I mean, he was doing everything for his son the last couple of seasons. Right. That's a pretty big deal, part of his character. Yeah. Maybe w- maybe there's a rash of uh, copycat. I know they kind of touched on the copycat thing yeah. for a little bit, but yeah. like, kind of Gotham is in trouble, kind of thing. So I I might have discussed this with Julian. Um, something th- was that the one that got you into watching it the first time? Yeah, yeah, you you told me about it. Yeah, like, you need to watch this. Yeah, I was so like, good. Yeah, I don't know. I watched <laughs> it. And I was, it was like, damn all right. good. <laughs> and uh, so I always thought it'd be cool. How I envision a, a sequel or keep the continuation of this is that because obviously his sister died. If she came back, and she took the role of the dad as the ghost, the passenger, and she was still there, trying to talking him through his yeah, different I situations, it. I thought it'd be kind of cool. She'd come back. She's still being an actress. So do, do you know how old the comic book, because it was a comic book, right? I don't or know a graphic that. novel? I believe, I don't know much about it, but I believe I so. nothing about so, that. So um, what, bo- excuse me, what always bothered me about Dexter was that I had written a, uh, like a treatment for a screenplay about a serial killer killer who worked as a, um, in forensics. Wow. Before Dexter came out. Dang, they stole your idea. I know. They must have been listening. And, we talk uh, about that a lot on the show. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I never knew when the, you know, when the comic book came out. Because um, I was like, you know, I wonder if that influenced me. But it was, a, it was a long time ago. Certainly years and years and years before Dexter came out. And I mean, it's not that original of an idea. but Yeah, that came uh, out in 2013. Uh, but the, the comic book? Uh-huh. Oh, wow. Yeah, so... They yeah. did steal my idea. Yeah, they did. All right. It's actually a Marvel comic. Really? What? Yeah. Interesting. Bring him into the MCU. That'd be crazy cool. <laughs> <laughs> he has a superpower, so that kind of lame, but. Oh. Who do you fight? 
Maybe in, in Mortal Kombat. Nah, maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe, yeah. maybe that's yeah. maybe that's somebody that um, it could be on Jessica Jones's yeah show. Daredevil and him bump heads. Yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be a cool crossover. I actually like that. Yeah, I like that a lot. Daredevil's trying to solve a murder. So in like five years, when this is a thing, no, <laughs> they, right. they, stole yeah. they stole it here. Not only did October they steal your idea, right. but they're, they're, the same yeah. the same person that stole mine is listening <laughs> right now. That's funny. That's how it happens. Yeah. So I don't know what's gonna happen with Dexter. I'm super excited. I thought the show was great. Um, I'm not sure how soon it's gonna come out. I mean, obviously with the pandemic and everything, who knows when they're gonna start filming that? But I'm excited. How bi- did they say what they're paying him to come back? No, how, I want to know because I, I know he didn't want to do it, or he wanted. You said he wanted to wait. He wanted to wait because he wanted Dexter to be old. He wanted the people to really want this. Like he wanted to wait. He said it's a he wanted slippery to, slope. He said right. he wa- yeah. There's at some point people just don't care. Forget. Yeah. He said he wanted to wait like 20 years or something. Something crazy. It's like Bull from Night Court. It's just like, <laughs> but we're going to bring it back. Well, he, he, he also wanted, he, he had aspirations of doing other things, though. Yeah. He didn't want to be typecast. How'd that just, pan out? He did it some other stuff. He did that um, uh, movie, Stevie show. It's a Netflix series called Safe. Check it out on Netflix if you haven't seen it. How many seasons? Just, there's just one or, one or two. No, there's two. There's two, I believe. I'll check it out. No, it's really good. I was hoping they'd get like the long treatment. Right. Because it's really well done. Yeah. He just plays a normal dad. That's that's. I a, can't get into it, but that's the thing about Netflix, though. It's easy to get lost in the shuffle. There's some really yeah, fantastic yeah. shows mm-hmm. yeah. that yeah. are stuck at one or two seasons. It's yeah. just too much content. Yeah, I can't remember if there's one or two, but you'll watch it and you'll be like, "Dang, this looks pretty good." And he was also in uh, Game Night. Yeah, yeah, that he was, was pretty a, fun. He was in Game yeah. Night. Yeah, I he played that. a bad guy in it, mm-hmm. which is pretty cool. I haven't seen that one. It's, yeah, it's fun. I watch a lot of movies, man. You watch all the movies, Marcy. I know. Don't say a lot because that sounds like you miss a few, and you you don't. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't. But no, he's been he's been pretty low key. I still think it's crazy that this dude had cancer during the filming of that series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crazy. There's a, there's um there's another show. The name is gonna escape me. Well, there's another one called Spartacus. But yeah, that's what I was yeah. thinking of. Yeah, I remember uh, watching yeah. that. I read yeah. your mind. And then yeah, I like watched that guy, and I'm like. He died. Like what the fuck? Like I have no chance. Yeah, no. <laughs> it oh, was man. That was tough. Yeah. yeah, I like that show a lot. Yeah, same. Cool. Violent and amusing. <laughs> We're gonna switch gears here and go over, go over to our next topic. Since it's whole month long, talking about Halloween themed, horror themed episodes. As you notice, my attire. I'll be wearing a costume every episode going forward. He. That's just Marcy without a shirt. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, this is how hairy I really got shaved. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be horrible. <laughs> oh man, I'm actually yeah, not you're getting I'm, waxed. Or yeah. Yeah. It'd be rough. Oh, Jesus, oh, you need a lawnmower to the, trim it down. All for the us. shaving cream I have to use. Yeah. But actually, I'm not as hot as I was before. You've acclimated. I That's right know. before you have a heat stroke. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's, He's like, like stop sweating. Right. Yeah, no, pass out. this is fine. This is it's gonna pass out. <laughs> all right, last topic of the episode. What you got, Julian? Yeah, I love that. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. We are going to talk about what makes a scary movie a good movie. Mm-hmm. Or what makes a good movie scary. So that's a really tough one. I watch a lot of horror movies. I mean, if there's any genre, that's probably my favorite. I would say one that I probably watch more than any um, is actually Exorcist 3. Ooh. And... Um, I think it's kind of an underrated one. One, people pe- 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 hear part three and they're like, uh, you know. But it's based upon the book and it was directed by William Blady who wrote Exorcist. And it's got George T. Scott and William Blady's directing style, the the storyline and the weirdness. I just really dig that movie. There's a lot of things that I really like about it. But, <clears throat> I mean, other than, you know, it's hard to choose. So, I mean, under John Carpenter, my man wearing my... You know, they live shirt and really you know, any John Carpenter. The thing is, you know, absolutely one of my my favorites, hands down. Uh, Aliens, obviously, is one of the greatest horror movies ever. I, I mean, they're just there's so many. I 
I can't, I'm forgetting more of my favorite horror movies than I can think of. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's just a question for the whole room. I mean, what would be the standard horror movie? Is there one? Because like, it's, it's so much genre split. Yeah. I mean, there's just so many different, you know, mm-hmm. different, like you said, I mean, like horror genres. And really, you know, they are functionally different as to like how they work and why they're scary. Um, and, you know, they play on d- different fears. Like, I don't, like, possession movies don't, I mean, my wife loves to watch those, and they bore the crap out of me. You know, I could, uh, and even though Exorcist 3 is a possession movie, but it's actually kind of a, like, a crime mystery. But, you know, just uh, the ones that they just continuously pump out, they're just kind of the same story, or, you know, the generic uh, haunted house movies that we just keep getting over and over and over. Yeah. And, um, those kind of, those, those tend to bore me, but... You know, there's always those really good ones. I mean, Poltergeist is still mm. one of the best. Mm. I know it's PG, but man, that is a scary movie. <laughs> oh, man, it's so well done. That's so well done. Blake, your take. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, th- as far as the standard goes, um, that is, it's, I think that's why horror is. Well, for, I guess for, I'm oh, sorry, well, sorry to cut you off real quick. I want to dive in a little bit deeper so you can. It's a broader, broader question. So for you, your scary movie, what makes a scary movie for you personally that makes you scared? And why is it a good movie for you to watch? So you, you want the yeah. movie? Yeah, for you. I mean, I'd probably go back, and this is a little bit of recency bias. You mentioning movies that like Poltergeist, Jesus. I don't know how I forgot about that last time we talked about this. Um, but I'll probably go... Um, I'll probably go back to Strangers. I actually watched it after we talked about it last time. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's the thing that bothers me most um, is um, the the human aspect of things. I, I think that's knowing that there are truly people out there who don't have a conscience, who don't have, um, you know, who, who just want to hurt you, just want to, you know, so you and, pain and destruction. Yeah, you know, just want to watch the world burn, um, and and can do so with a straight face. Um, that is, that's that's always been something that's been extremely concerning to me. Um, and so, yeah, th- what makes a good movie? I, th- I think for me, it's the realism. Um, I don't want to see, you know, I don't want to see a, a hundred and ten pound woman fighting off a two hundred pound man. Um, but, you know, when it's when it's the movie Strangers, I come back to that one because. Um, that movie was, it was really realistic and well thought out. That's something that, I mean, they say it's based off of a true story. I don't know how accurate it is because if nobody was around to see it, but, um, they did all the things that you do to make sure that you keep somebody in a house, you know, locked in from all, in all four walls and, and have fun with them for the night. Um, I, I, after I watched that movie, I kind of looked at took a step back in my living room and kind of looked at my house and saw how easily something like that would be to do um, if I wasn't in a position to defend myself in in that arena. And so um, that's kind of where I was teeing off on this horror is such a subjective thing. Um, You know, it really kind of dials into your fears. My girlfriend, for instance, um, possession movies, absolutely her thing. And I think a lot of that has to do with her faith. A lot of that has to do with her upbringing, uh, upbringing, but like movies like Exorcist and things like that, that's her ballpark. Julian? <clears throat> I already know what you're scared about. Listen, I'm scared about everything. All right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't mess with scary movies. All right. I'll watch them, but it's usually I instantly regret it because, like, my mind tends to overthink, and I'll be like, oh, no. Think it. Go ahead. All right. So, all like, right. possession movies, demons, all that shit? No. I can't do it. <laughs> I can't do it. But I you, saw, have go, you have gone to see I them. have gone to see them. But, but what but makes you go see them? Well, I'm saying like what gets curiosity, you? stupid curiosity. I'm like, all right, this looks stupid. I know I'm gonna regret it, but but there's I, some of them, some of them that you're like, dang, you like that was a good though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Midsummer, mid. Okay, so Midsummer is not really like I hated it. Yeah, really? Hell yeah! I liked it I because hated the it too. whole time I was, I was, it was a nerve thing. You know, I was un, I was unsettled the entire time. It wasn't scary. There's no jump scares. It was all just psychological. And those type of uh, horror movies, I like a lot. I like those more than I like the monsters. And the slasher films are pretty cool, too. But, yeah, demons and stuff. I saw Paranormal Activity. Didn't sleep for four days. I saw The Conjuring. Uh, didn't sleep for six days. So, 
I don't mean to interrupt you there, but, you know, I just said, you know, uh, possession movies aren't my thing, but hands down the scariest movie I've seen in a long time. And I watch a lot of scary movies, so it takes a lot to, like, mm-hmm. actually scare me. Mm-hmm. And Host, um, that's on Shudder, scared the shit out of me. And both me and my, my wife uh, were watching it. And, I, I mean, if you were to, to tell mm-hmm. me the, the, the plot of the show and it's another, like, shot on your computer, uh, I would have been like, no way. Like, that's going to be garbage. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've seen it before. Right. And, and man, they, it, it, is, it is a master class in suspense and um, using the, you know, the method in which they're telling that story to really scare you. So uh, check that one out if you haven't. It's going to be a no for me, dog. <laughs> it's, it's good. <laughs> so my. Stuff that scares the shit out of me has always been aliens. Aliens movies scare the shit out of me. And the number one scariest alien movie I've ever seen, besides Fire in the Sky, which is based on a true story, allegedly. (laughs) It's real as shit. But, um, oh my gosh, I just had, I just lost it. Communion? The fourth kind. Oh, I was hoping you'd say that. The fourth kind. Yeah. Scare the shit out of me. Dig that one. Oh, it's so well done. That was a good movie. Oh, it's so good. And, Oh my gosh, the whole the hem, hip, hypnotic type stuff that they do, hypnosis, and the the way they filmed that, where they mixed it with the real footage, yeah. Yeah. which was not real footage, it was all fake footage. So just it was one of those fake mockumentary type movies, but it was so well done to make you think, was that real? Yeah. When you when you when they draw the line between is that real or not? Like this movies like the Blair Witch Project. When that first came out, let's get that shit out of me too. Cause like, was that real? Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's those are the ones that scare, to me. Those are the ones that are good. The ones that make you like, that could really happen. Yeah. And that's the realistic side of things where I'm like, oh shit. The the slasher films, yeah, a guy crazy with a knife can obviously come at you. But, I don't know. Those don't scare me as much. Freddy Krueger though, that's a whole different story. Yeah, Freddy. That was definitely as as a kid. That was definitely. Ranks up there with yeah. um, kind of a looming bad person in my, you know, yeah. what's behind the, the door and over in the other room or what's that noise kind of thing. Yeah. And uh, but When it came to aliens where they can paralyze you and you can't move and they just abduct you and take you away without anyone seeing or knowing, knowing it just that fear always scared the, sh- the shit out of me. The big, eye, the big head, big eyeballs, long fingers, long skinny bodies. And the fact that they're not human. And they're not a monster either, though. Right. So it's like I mean, to, it's different, and they're not, they're not coming at you yelling. Right. You know, they're so quiet, and sometimes they'll just in movies they'll just look at you, <laughs> hover over your just bed, judging and, you. Yeah, <laughs> just judging you. You You're can't so even, gross. You I can't, can't, even, can't, <laughs> can't wait to probe you. Yeah, right? <laughs> and the fact that we don't know anything about them, like with other horror movies, like you know what can stop. In certain movies, like if you if you get the specific something, you can stop them. Right. You know, whether if it's like, like for like for example, a vampire. You kill a vampire, you get a stake, drive yeah. through their heart. Sunlight, like they have weaknesses and stuff. Yeah. The aliens, I don't know. The, the the fact that they're super superior in intelligence and technology. I think that's a lot of the reason why the paranormal activity movies had such good success. You know, like you were saying, Julian. Was because this thing was happening, this 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 paranormal, you know, thing, and there was it was it, it was just if it was happening to you, it was happening. There was no, you know, go grab a, the magic bullet. There was none of that, and so I think that's why they were able to get away with so many, you know, because it was just like you were on your edges seat the whole time. Um, but yeah, I, I think I think that's a lot of that's a lot of what drives the the fear in me is is the realism. You know, could I be in a place, you know, whether aliens are real or not, but the fourth kind, like I, I have a lot of brothers. I have five brothers. I watched that movie. I set them all down to rewatch that with me. I was like, this is the craziest (laughs) shit. At the time I was, I was like you, Marcy, I didn't know what was real and what wasn't. They're saying this is real footage. Could this be real footage? And I think as soon as they put that question in your mind, they got you. you. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, they, again, they use that medium really, really well to tell their story and bring you in. And I think that's, you know, what makes, um, you know, a good, a really good horror movie, especially when, you know, we keep repeating the same stories and it's sometimes it's hard to, 
to make something new and fresh and and or make something feel new and fresh and i think you know that that movie definitely did it so i want to make a list here with the four of us here so one thing that i think that we're all decide on is the realism for a scary horror movie or a horror movie that makes it a good movie so that's one thing realism part two would be that i don't know what we just talked about i don't know what, what category of a word you would just say what that is the the uh, not unknown but the Oh man, I had it in my mind earlier and I lost it. What's the word for that? Not questioning if it's real or not real. The the um, uncertainty of uh, of of reality. The, pos- the possibility, the possibility. I'll just use that. The possibility that this could be a real thing, and that's different than realism, because realism is like realistically getting in scenarios and like doing certain things, but the possibility of questioning whether. In real life. <laughs> yeah. It's like. Well, and I, I think there's another side to that, though, because I think that there are some horror movies where if it can pull me into the its universe, its world, like I can get lost in that, too. Like it doesn't necessarily have to be something necessarily realistic, you know, kind of like Freddy Krueger, like you fall asleep. Like, is there a dream world? Like he functions in this plane, you know, or whatever, like. On paper, that doesn't seem all too realistic, but yeah. 10-year-old Blake will tell you. Yeah, like yeah. the thing. I mean, yeah, yeah, that, like, yeah. you know, just the um, just the sort of otherworldliness and, and the visceralness of, you know, what those cre- what the creature looked like, you know, when the dogs open up. Oh, and, and, I mean, it's just it's so disturbing in that moment yeah. that you're like, I haven't seen anything like this. Oh, and yeah. that head, you know, with the spider legs coming out. And, you're, uh. you know, you're just like, what is happening? Yeah, so, like, 10-year-old me. That, I showed that to my kids, and they were like, meh. Yeah, God. Yeah. Yeah. Kids are so spoiled what they can see these days. Well, I mean, CGI I mean, fixed everything. Yeah, that's that, what I'm know. saying. Yeah, and, and you know, they, I mean, you grew up on – Walking Dead on TV. I remember they d- did a remake of Night of the Living Dead, and I, I watched a documentary, and, you know, they were talking about what they had to cut to make it rated R rather than X. And, I mean, th- you know, the things they had to cut are things you see nonstop <laughs> right yeah. now, you know, on yeah. Walking Dead. Yeah, yeah. No, no, totally. Um, gosh, I still don't know what that word would be besides realism. The, I don't know what the word is I'm talking about. I'm My vocabulary is too small. <laughs> to like, to like come up with a word. I can't even come up with another word for small. Yeah. Demure. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, but you were saying that religion, that religion type satanic movies for you aren't. Well, no, I mean, you know, it, it comes like to just the straight possession ones, you know, that, that they, they've been kind of like kicking out and, and repeatedly done i mean you know like exorcist is you know the original is great yeah and and there are ones that deal with those you know demonic forces and and things like that but um you know they get rehashed so many times that's totally true that you know just throwing me in front of a a possession movie just isn't going to do it for me but in the same way that um you know any old slasher flick if it's just another big brooding person with you know some sort of mask that's kind of wandering around killing you know, yeah, same. It's, like, that's all right, it's been right, done way too right. many times. You can't only make it so scary. Um, hmm. I don't know how you classify that like that separate. Yeah. Sorry, I'm having trouble making this list right now. This I mean, I think I think time. it's a I think it's a moving target. I mean, I think what made a scary a good scary movie maybe 20 years ago isn't the same as now, except for you know innovation. I guess would be. Um, but are, I are, are scary movies being innovated to today, though? I think so. I mean, I think I think that the good ones are, or or being able to remix parts and and make what has been done so many times feel new again. So that makes me want to talk about what we were talking about earlier. You like Midsummer? Mm-hmm. You didn't like it. I, I definitely didn't like it. I, I didn't like it. it, and and the other one that. Um, but I feel like did. movies are going that route now. A lot of movies are like that. The way it's eerie makes you feel. Gross watching it. What was the uh, other movie he did? Do you know what I'm Hereditary? Talking? Yeah, I hated yeah. Hereditary. I didn't like it that much either. Yeah. And and I and like I said, it takes a lot for me to not like a movie. Same. And and especially when people talked up Hereditary so much. I you know, I was so bored watching that. Yeah, and visually it was filmed really Absolutely. good. Absolutely. And Midsummer is beautiful. Yeah. But um, you know, thematically, I was like I, I felt like pretty 
I've seen a lot of those before, you know, the, yeah. the seventies, uh, cult horror, you know, slow burn kind of stuff. And so for me, I was like, I kind of, I was like, I know where this is going. Yeah. And it was kind of just a very long way from point A to point B. Cause I still feel like with good movies, you still have to have a good story. And I just feel like those two movies didn't have that good of a story. And then the cliffhangers at the end aren't really, I don't know. But you know what? And, and maybe I'm wrong here, but I think there's probably a reason that you, you like Midsummer, And I think that for people that don't watch a lot of horror movies, um, that where that kind of genre might be new, it was visually stimulating. And yeah. it was, it was something that um, if you haven't watched a bunch of old seventies cult horror films, um, that's new for me. I mean, you know, it's like, I was like, I've seen Wicker Man, uh, you know, this is Wicker Man remix to that? me. Yeah, I've seen Wicker Man. Who was in that movie? Uh, uh, well, I mean, the, the remake, which is a masterpiece with Nicolas Cage when he's yeah. running around in yeah. a bear <laughs> suit punching people. But, um, <laughs> you know, I, I don't remember who was in the original. Uh, and that stylistically is more what Midsummer was, was getting at. Yeah. But no, th- I feel like a lot of the horror movies are going that Midsummer Hereditary route now. They're okay. I think I just hate that everyone else thinks they're tens when they're not. Yeah, that was yeah. I'm yeah. I'm normally pretty on the line. If somebody you know, if it's got ninety percent on Rotten Tomatoes, I'm probably gonna like it. I didn't and see why Hereditary got the accolades that it did. I mean, it was. I saw that one, and mm. I feel like a lot of these movies are trying to be more thought thought provoking, but I still don't see how they are. And was people, that one thought provoking though? What Hereditary? Yeah, I don't know. And I feel I like from I feel like people online are saying that, that these movies mm. are. So it reminded me of somebody that was like, all right, I've 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 got all these ideas for these scenes that I think are creepy, mm-hmm. you yeah, know? And, they just, and then just kind of like, just kind of patched them together. There were, I mean, obviously there was a plot, but it was just sort of like, here's this creepy scene and then some stuff happens and here's this creepy scene. I can only but, remember like two distinct things. Right. The, and which right. Girl, her, girl yeah. is in her head. Yeah. Right. And then the very end. So that and then uh, like, mom in the room with the... Uh, yeah, to get like yeah, yeah. That, that's, that's it. Yeah, that's it. I just remember him banging his head on the table. Oh yeah, that was. I forgot about. I was that. like, oh yeah. shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't expecting that, but. Yeah. But yeah, midsummer. I can remember all that because I don't know, it gripped me. But it's, I mean, it's a weird movie. No, Annabelle, though. I don't want to think about that one. Annabelle, that's a real story. Yeah, that one. <laughs> It is a real story. I mean, that one messed me up. I mean, I hold mean. on. So, <laughs> Annabelle is a real story. It is a real story. And, and she escaped too. She's out there. Oh my they gosh. They never found they her. They didn't escape. That's yes, a lie. That's that not doll what is happened. gone. No, it's not no, gone. Right. Yeah, I heard that it's in like the brothers or something. Yeah, it's the family. Okay, so basically they had to move because they're. It's with Tupac and. <laughs> <laughs> no, down so. In Cuba. Yeah. Basically, what happened was that they had to move all the stuff because they're. It was in an actual house, in a mm-hmm. home. And they turn it into a actual business. They, yeah, it was they, like a museum kind of. It thing. was a museum, and they were uh, without the right permits and the right whatever zoning, they couldn't do it anymore. Oh, okay. And it had to do with a lot of the parking and the way the neighbors were complaining of all these people coming and all these parking. It wasn't for it was for residential, not business. Right. Mm-hmm. So they had to move everything. Oh, I see. So that uh, so someone went there to go travel to go see it, and they didn't realize that it was moved. Look, you can't be too careful out there. That's well, I mean, you're right. I'm glad she's safe and whatever. <laughs> she's in her box surrounded by <laughs> legitly she's surrounded by all those crucifixes and yeah. holy water and like they really do do that yeah, yeah. good <laughs> i ain't ever going to see but i mean there really was soon. two investigator horror uh uh supernatural investigators that actually really did all that stuff and mm-hmm. put it all in yeah 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 it's an absolute real thing well if it's really haunted or not someone believes it is and they still have it all locked up well that just kind of remind me did you guys ever watch like faces of death Oh yeah, I did. Yeah. So you know, oh, maybe. I, I, I would maybe. love to. I would love to see somebody go back and do a documentary on on that. That person who created Faces of Death is is would have been king in you know today's with the oh, internet. Oh yeah. I mean, he created you know this this fake, you know, piece of 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 footage and and sold it as real. Yeah. And and made an you know an empire on fake death footage and yeah. was just so ahead of, I mean, I, you know, it seems kind of, you know, exploitive, but was so ahead of their time saying, you know, people want to see this, yeah. uh, let's shoot a bunch of fake footage and call it real. And 
And yeah. at the time, people didn't know and for a long time couldn't tell. And I, it's very much <laughs> like it is today when we yeah. can't tell what's real and not what, yeah. what's not. But um, Really like eating monkey brain? Like, like, yeah, like, it's, like yeah, it's all fake. Cutting though. them. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. And yeah. It was so well done. I remember as a kid, I yeah, was probably you, like in high school, maybe freshman year, and I was like watching this, downloading this. I'm yeah. like, da- I was downloading it because at the time you couldn't just search it. You'd have to download it. Right. Yeah, I've been fa- VHS for me at the, you know. Yeah. And I remember, and I remember people had the VHS and like, they were like sharing it around high school and stuff, but I never got, I never got to, to see it, but I downloaded it on either Morpheus or LimeWire or whatever. And that's how I, that's how I got to watch it. And it, cause it's funny cause you never know what part of Faces of Death you would get. It was just called Faces of Death. And it could, that movie was like two hours long. Yeah, so... There's a whole bunch of clips just put together. Right, so the first one was all fake. I mean, I think maybe the first three, and eventually, you know, they would just start buying, um, you know, rights to footage from, you know, real events from around the world, you yeah, know. But or, or like a, poli- a political person would actually shoot their brains. Right, out. but the originals were just all, I mean, they were just yeah. fake. And then they started just mixing and matching them, like, yeah, you just, this one's fake, this one's real. That one where that kid... I remember one where the guy was blowing up the boat, and then the guy or the kid, like the, his, he was with his dad, <laughs> blowing up the the tube boat, whatever. And the kid comes up and just jumps on it, and the air pushes back on the on the dad's head and explodes the head. <laughs> but I think looked, I remember seeing that. Bro, it looks so real though. Yeah, like it looks so real. And I was like, and the kid literally, his face is what sold it. His the kid was like, I just killed my dad, and it just cuts off. That's that. That sounds that sounds good. No, it was crazy. It was I'm gonna go on YouTube. I'm sure I can find <laughs> it somewhere. Oh it's, oh, it's all out there now. Yeah, I mean, with YouTube. Actually, I don't know if it would be on YouTube now or not. I don't throw it out. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think so. I just it'll prompt well, you to it, do that. If over not, 18 it, thing probably. if not, it'll definitely be on Twitter. Like I'll I'll find oh, it. It's out in I just world. watch somebody like a dude jump. 15 stories out the side of a building I and not remember. die on Twitter. No, they did. They even did one and were like they were like hunting like. Wait, the guy's penis what? off and stuff yeah. on some of those Facebook Twitter videos. Are you on Twitter? I uh, no. Oh, Twitter <laughs> has no filter. Twitter yeah, has no filter. Twitter has like if it exists in the world, it's on. It's Twitter. on Twitter. Uh, let's go back to the story. Does the man live? Mm-hmm. Is he Clark Kent? So, oh, like, no. <laughs> so this guy, I'm sure he had his reasons, but thought it, it was in his best interest to end his life. He was up pretty high. Mm-hmm. Hey, fit, you know, fifteen, twenty stories. Um, it did not kill him. He bounced like a bag of potatoes. Like I've never seen a human body bounce on concrete. He bounced, and he was not okay. Dang, he was absolutely man. alive. That's rough, know. man. I'm gonna have to look this up. Twitter is a, is a wild place. Yeah. No, right. no, no, so no go, thanks. So go back, <laughs> I'll go back to the main topic here. Yeah, so sorry. the <laughs> thing, that, the thing that makes scary movies good. I mean, realism. Yes, <laughs> that's the only thing we got on this list right well, now. Well, I mean, and, and I don't. It's I, so I can't subjective. go. Yeah, I can't even follow that one because. Be, yeah, I, okay. I would say for like for for people in my home, the more outlandish it is, the more they're drawn into it. You know what I'm saying? Like for me, like okay, like for you, you you like the alien ones. You know, the fourth kind is is based in realism. Well, there isn't a lot of good alien scary movies though. No, there isn't. Mm. They're right. really, they're really not. But like, things, Signs is pretty good. <laughs> things like that, like yeah, like, even like Signs, like okay. Signs, I appreciated it for the movie itself. But I was like, I have no fear of aliens afterwards or the unknown or anything like that. So I mean, it's it's so subjective. It's hard to make a good list. Did you ever watch Fire in the Sky? No, go watch that one. That good, huh? It's it's pretty good. Watch and the fact that it is based on a true story where this really happened, allegedly. Um, I, go look it up. And is, is that the one in Arizona? No. No? Okay. No. So the, the, just remind me, Phoenix I had to go lights. look it up. Invaders from Mars was a alien horror movie that really creeped me out as a kid. And I think the reason was the idea is that, um, you know, aliens come down and, and start replacing people and, and the main character is a kid, right? And sort of that fear of like having your parents, you know, okay. replaced by by aliens, and I'm like who is that. you know, who who's real, who's not. So you know, like you know, body sna- you know, invasion of the body snatchers. Oh, yeah. I don't know if that counts as like an alien movie, but 
Would, would Killer Clowns from Space count? That is a great movie. Because <laughs> that one, I oh, saw that bro, one. That takes two of the things I hate the most. Yeah. <laughs> one fucking movie. Oh, dude. Yeah. I, uh, but oh. the, 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 the effects. Man, oh, yeah. The practical the effects, effects are just, they're so yeah. good. Yeah, and that's, an, okay, that's another reason why I like scary movies, when they use the yeah. practical effects. So I would get in a lot of trouble if I didn't talk about uh, and plug the movie that I did the soundtrack to, and Exposure, which was shot here, Austin Snell and shout out to Austin. Yeah, I wanted to come on the episode on the episode one time, and that was all done with with practical effects. That's Jake oh, nice. Jackson who did who did all that work. And then right now, my wife is actually speaking about the movie she's in. I am Lisa um, that has premiered, and so she's in Kansas City doing a Q and A for the movie that she was in, and that's also. Practical effects by Jake Jackson. Oh, that's who awesome. Who lives here in, in Topeka. Yeah. No, that's awesome. Austin Snell. He's doing some good stuff. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Ah, oh, man. I'm, he needs to get back on Facebook or unblock me. I don't know which is the one, but <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah, he, no. Yeah. He, yeah, I think he disappeared. Yeah, he disappears. He comes and goes. But no, he's, ah, oh, man. I can't wait to have him on the episode one time. He's great. Yeah. Yeah, we went to high school. We're the same class. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, super cool. Do you yeah. know my brother, Paul Smith? <laughs> that's your brother that's my brother oh shit yeah 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 yeah, yeah. when did you graduate well no, I, oh, 98 would have been my graduating okay. year yeah yeah oh man that's Small crazy yeah, I know. well for one i know a lot of people in general and then to peak high right you know like yeah. subtle uh, brag i know a lot of people i mean i do <laughs> so here on a very monkey suit. certain set of skills <laughs> yeah i know a lot of people no that's awesome no exposure oh man we're gonna have to watch that one day. Yeah, I'm. Yeah. Yeah. So you know what makes a really good horror movie? Soundtrack. Oh, <laughs> that's another thing. All right, that's that's boom. Yeah, I have a couple of questions about that. Actually, yeah. I was hoping that we we wouldn't we would have a few minutes at least. To yeah, I'm not trying to keep it too much longer. Oh no, I'm I, like I said, I'm free tonight, man. Go ahead. What is it? So I don't know much about how that the process of, of developing something like that is, but I mean, what, what goes into, um, what goes into that? Because I'm sure you have to work with, you know, the director and I'm sure there's a couple of people, you know, you, you confer with how much of, how much of that soundtrack is, is you. So that was a, for, uh, for exposure was the first soundtrack I ever wrote. And, um, I'm gonna get free Julian. I'm about to die. Yeah, yeah, no, he's gonna pass out. Welcome to your horror. (laughs) 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 Being uh, stuck in a gorilla scoot. Yeah, yeah, help help a brother out here. No, but um, you know, I'd never written a soundtrack before. I had no idea like what the the normal process was. I mean, I'd seen you know like things on YouTube of you know like how do you score a movie kind of. um, So scoring the movie and the soundtrack is that two different things? Yeah, and and I would say it was I did a little bit of both. So, but yeah, I mean that's what really t- took up the most. And and you know, th- like again, I, I I just think back to certain scenes where you can't, uh, unless I'm saying listen, you know, like just listen, you wouldn't know. I mean, it would be in an empty room and you're watching somebody, but there yeah. are you know, there's like bass notes that are happening there and and other things like that you've seen the video where star wars where they're you know when darth vader comes out and the guy's walking towards darth vader and it's all quiet and squeaky shoes and stuff oh right yeah. you, you've seen that i mean yeah. that definitely plays a big part into movies and absolutely the fill and tone but i feel like for horror movies that's a really big deal right and that's what i was getting at was like more than any other genre i would think oh definitely you know i definitely think because so. that's that's a something that's based solely on emotion mm-hmm. So, bravo! That's a level of creativity I don't think I could I could reach on my best day. So, realism score slash soundtrack. That's two things. Yeah, yeah. Now put down. that on there for sure. Uh, that's funny. I've I've been my eyes have been open. So. Well, the next thing we we'll talk about we we didn't get to talk about too much is effects. Yeah. When it comes oh, to yeah. horror movies. No, I, absolutely. No. I, you know. You think about how many horror movies have been ruined by bad CGI. Oh, yeah, for sure. Or even just bad makeup, honestly. Like someone being a ghost, just let me throw some some powder on you, <laughs> and you're a ghost now, you know? Um, with, with with that being said, what's the first thing that comes to mind where when you saw a ghost and it was like, that's horribly CGI or that's good CGI or, hey, that's more than a guy in a white sheet with the holes cut out. 
the first thing that comes to mind <laughs> is the Frighteners. Have you seen the Frighteners? Yeah, I love it. I love Frighteners, and I love the way the ghosts were in that movie. Yeah, and and that didn't take me out of the moment. I mean, it no. it it had the campiness to it, so that you know the early CGI stuff didn't feel it didn't feel weird. No, yeah. and I feel like the the brightness of the ghosts were toned down enough, and that's I feel like a lot of stuff that happens with CGI. It's either too bright when it turns into from CGI. Just tone it down a little bit more, and I feel like it look way more realistic, even if they couldn't. Get the realistic feel to it. Just the brightness turned yeah. down helps it up. Big well, um, now I haven't seen that movie, but I do know that um, when it comes to CGI and even more so in animated movies, the lighting portion of the CGI, um, that's where they make the big bucks. That's why, you know, Disney movies that are 15, 20 years old now are, they still look great because of the amount of money that goes into lighting and things like that. Um, it, the first movie that comes to mind when I think of Ghost is the movie Ghost. That's like mm-hmm. one of my earliest, I think, oh, man. memories. And what's crazy, those CGI demon-looking shadow figure things. Well, I mean, I, yeah, I, well, I think Weird. that was just straight animated. Yeah, yeah. 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 It, was, yeah. it was. But what they did differently, though, is it went against the structure. Right, right. And it flowed through the structure like a projection would. Yeah. Which made it different and honestly cooler yeah. compared to just a... See through a ghost, yeah, which is really cool. So, are, are we stuck to ghosts specifically for ruined? Oh uh, no, yeah. Oh, no, I no. mean, I was gonna I say mean, for like the first thing that came to mind was Alien Resurrection and the CGI aliens on there were horrible, God. and also like the remake of the thing w- with the CGI there. Just I didn't even that, watch that one. I was, I mean, that made me so so sad. Yeah, I heard going in that people were extremely disappointed. So I didn't want to feel that pain. Uh, me and Julian recently seen Demon Knight. Oh, that? yeah, dude. <laughs> that soundtrack. <laughs> oh, dude. That's exactly what I was telling Julian. Yeah. Soundtrack's yeah. so good. Yeah, yeah. Gravediggers. Oh, man. my gosh. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I saw that. I remember I remember the day when we went and saw it in the theater. I was with my friend Ray. And, uh, Did you watch it in town? Yeah. Here it, had, it was. Uh, oh, so where was that? Fox. So I saw it at um, Westridge 6. Okay, in the mall? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I remember, you know, the soundtrack, Gravediggers, and then... Um, Hey man, nice shot. The, um, that filter. Uh, as I was watching this movie with Julian, because I was like, Julian, you have to watch this movie. I love the prosthetics that they use. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. the the make. Oh my gosh, it's so well done. There's a specific scene in this movie. If you haven't seen <laughs> this, this movie, is Demon Knight. It's from Tales of the Crypt. It's their series of movies that they that they made after the TV show, mm-hmm. and uh, starring Billy Zane and um, I can't remember the guy, the other actor's name. He's in horror movies. Pinkett. Yeah, Jennifer Pinkett Smith. Super young, looking hella sexy with her short haircut still. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. But um, so there's a point in the movie where Billy Zane, he's playing a like a country, uh, a a country hick demon boss guy where he's not really a demon. He's like a step above a demon. And he punched a cop through the face. Through the face. Yeah. Julian, what were your thoughts seeing that? Because it's the first time I've ever seen this movie. (laughs) Yeah. The. Because considering, you know, it's a it's an older film, you know, what, 90s maybe? Yeah. Oh, yeah, early yeah. 90s for sure. So <laughs> seeing that, they did it really, it was really well done. I mean, it, I was shocked. No, I'll, when we were watching, I like, Julian, shocked. pay attention to this one. Yeah, I mean, the, that that part is great because it's like you don't really know what's going on. Yeah. And, I mean, you know, you, you know where something's up, but, the, you know, the moment he punches <laughs> that guy through the true. head, it's like the whole movie changes. You're oh, like, yeah. oh, oh we're in a different <laughs> <through> <laughs> kind of movie yeah. here. I was like, well, oh. it has, and what's cool is yeah, it, gets got, it gets stuck yeah. in. And, like, to me, that, that's, like, some of the realism that I'm talking about. Because if you do punch someone through, you're not just going, it's not clear right. in and out. You're right. stuck in. You know, and the way he was moving him around, yeah. and he was still flailing around a little bit, just put it all together was so good. And the way they sh- they cut to from the front to the back of the head was so quick, and just made it look so realistic. Because who who knew if you sewed the whole sewed the whole thing all the way through, it probably looked bad as shit. Right? But they cut hurry up to the back of the head, and the fist. Oh, so well done. Yeah. Really. But even the CGI with like the cool um, laser eye things after the demons got killed in the eyeballs. Right. Blake, go watch that movie. I got a list. <laughs> well, yeah, Demon Knight. Yeah, that's that's a classic. It's really good. But you know, it's like you, you have like when we talked about the different genres. You know that you know I never thought Demon Knight was scary. I mean, it is a horror movie, yeah. but it's like this fun, um, campy, over the top, exciting kind of kind of horror movie. And, and I love those. Um, I mean, I really I love kind of all kinds, but I love them all for like different reasons. Yeah, no, for sure. I like that one a lot because. 
yeah, like, like you're saying, it wasn't scary. They're just in scary scenarios, I guess. The fact that there's, there's demons around. And I like the whole storyline. I just like the whole storyline. Yeah, that's a good story. The storyline's yeah, good. It's, it's kind of a comic booky like. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. And all the all the uh, prosthetic arm, like the arm getting broken against the, the wall. I don't know if you remember that scene mm -hmm. or not. That part, it seemed not too fake. Where she rips it off? No. Well, remember, like, the demon, like, throws her arm against the door and it breaks. And oh, they, yeah, They yeah. kept going. Yeah, yeah. That scene where they kept going and not just, like, uh, you broke your arm and it's falling apart. It's falling off now. Like, they put pressure on more. I don't know. I just feel like they tried more to make it more realistic of, like, all right, we're making this fake arm. We're going to break it. But we're going to keep pushing it more. I don't know. It's... Just the prosthetics were just done so well, and the acting for a horror movie was pretty good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. It's a fun movie. Yeah, it's one of the better ones I like. <laughs> and like I said, it's not really not that scary. It's just yeah, it's yeah. You know, I think some oh, go ahead. coming from someone who doesn't watch a whole lot of horror movies, yeah, you know, ones that are like that that are just kind of fun and don't take themselves that seriously. Like I tend to enjoy more. And I really feel like Billy Zane just made the perfect. Yeah, he was a good bad guy. He was a great bad guy. And the whole country accent thing was just too funny. You know, I think what, uh, for me, the one, you know, probably ones that creep me out or disturb me, like David Cronenberg kind of movies. I don't know if you like Videodrome. And, um, y you know, they're these like very, well, they're just weird, man. David Cronenberg. Is he the one that did Color of Space? No. Um, Who did, what did he do? Boy, I just forgot his oh name. So gosh. it's a good story because he made this movie called Hardware, which is like one of my favorite. It's just this classic cyberpunk movie, you know, and I grew up, again, a little punk kid, also a little hacker kid. And so like Hardware was, you know, this really classic. Oh, he did The Fly. David Cronenberg did The Fly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah sorry. So the guy that did Color Out of Space was um, uh, this guy that did this movie Hardware. And then he um, was doing the Island of Dr. Moreau. And there's like a documentary about that. Oh, I love that movie. And basically how his career was ruined um, by that movie. Oh, Sp really? Yeah. Um, specifically by like Marlon Brando. And um, he, they basically took over the movie and they were like, we're going to do these weird things. And he had like a, he had like a meltdown on set. Oh, wow. And because he was like the new it guy, you know, like hardware was this like this indie horror hit and he was, you know, going to be the new guy. And so the studios brought him in to go, you know, it's Marlon Brando. And, um, huh. you know, this, you know, was going to, they threw a lot of money at it and, um, uh, basically got tortured by Marlon Brando. Well, there's three things right there. Realism, score soundtrack, and <laughs> David Cronenberg, <laughs> <laughs> well, makeup and real prosthetic makeup. I don't know what the real term is, but the real stuff. Real makeup stuff, not the CGI shit. Convincing process. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it. You know, we have a visceral reaction to to those things that that we feel are real. There's like what what's called the uncanny valley. You know, we the, the idea that as something approaches the real, we become sort of disgusted by it. Mm -hmm. But if it's too real, uh, you know, we 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 have a different sort of reaction. So would you also think the like scary movies is the non-human factor of things? Like, for example, some people are scared. So supernatural stuff, some stuff aren't really humans. So whether it's a werewolf, vampire, zombie, whatever, they're not human. Um, th yeah, like you have your demons, whatever you want to call it, spirits or whatever. The unhuman thing, what makes a lot of horror movies horror I mean, obviously, that's that's different in the genre, but then that's overall those the non-human things would scare people, like yeah. robots. Like some people are really horrified of robots, and sometimes that's the scariest horror movie for them. I mean, if you will, I mean, look at the movie Jaws. Yeah, that, perfect. You know, yeah, yeah. Um, that's that's where my the movie Anaconda, mm -hmm. those those oh, sort yeah. of things. You know, yeah, kind of that cold-blooded. You know, something about looking into something's eyes and not seeing anything just looking into the depths of of you know the universe almost i don't i don't know the best way to explain it but yeah there's something to that um knowing that it doesn't think like you 
Um, it doesn't, it's not afraid to be alone in the dark or it's not afraid to be with someone else in the dark. Cujo. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was, I was going to say, I mean, when we talk about like werewolf movies and, and some of the, I mean, in a way the, the antagonist is, is replaceable. I mean, a werewolf movie, if you're stuck in a cabin and there's werewolves outside, it isn't that much different if it's Jason or, you know, you know, it could be kind of any I don't know. Robots might be interesting. I haven't yeah. seen a cabin stuck in the woods with robots <laughs> attacking you. But same thing, you know, with Jaws, you know, just again, it's it's this thing that is other, you know, different than you that does not empathize. It does not care. Um, and um, it's coming to kid you. Like Terminator scares the shit out of me. Right. I love um, Terminator. But, you know, I mean, they're all they're all kind of the same genre in that. I mean, yeah. obviously, you know, with Jaws, it's scary because you're, you're trapped on the water and you can't go anywhere because this thing is there. Um, and being stuck on a boat with Jaws swimming around you is not that much different than being stuck in a cabin or your yeah. house, you know. Yeah, for sure. And, it, and That's why I like the Scream movies, but I don't think they're scary because it's just a human being in a mask. Unlike Jason, because he's actually like, what is he? He's supernatural of some sort, right? I mean, now I like. I, I mean, who knows? I, I love the story arc of Jason. Yeah, it's you know, changed of so like, many times. yeah. I mean, it was like his mom. Yeah. And then it was Jason, and then it wasn't Jason. Like a like a and demon then, son or something, or uh, no. Then it was just like somebody like just wasn't Jason. It was just somebody like you know reprising that role, and then yeah. it was like, um, then he was. I think it was Jason <laughs> again. And then they brought him back to life, and that's yeah. it's. I think it's the fourth. I think it's the fourth one or I, fifth I one know. is when you get him like the supernatural part that starts. Because before that, there wasn't like he wasn't this invincible. I will come back to life, guy. Right. You know, it was like kind of Halloween. It was like, is he dead or is he not? But after they, for whatever reason, reason decided to go dig him up, <laughs> and then <laughs> you know during a storm, and you know what happens when you. In the middle of a storm, you use a big metal rod and stick it in a dead body. Of course, you're yeah, gonna get I, animated with the lightning. And ever since then, he's uh, he's been. Yeah, as a kid, I was really ever too scared of Jason or uh, Mike Mike Myers Halloween. No, those two never really scared me because I always thought they were just regular humans. And I was like, "You idiot! Pick up the gun and shoot him. Right, That's right. all it takes." So those movies like that don't scare me. I see. I love um, Jason Goes to Hell. I don't know if you've like that one. I can't was, remember. Is you know. It was so self-referential oh, okay, and and yeah. and really funny. See, that's the cover that I remember the most. And and you know it ta- it has you know makes reference to Evil Dead. And, like they go to Jason's house and there's like the Necronomicons on yeah. the on the <laughs> table there. And yeah, yeah. you know it it I think was just a great way to to ah, to, to play that with that one. And also Shocker, um, if you remember Shocker, because you know uh, Jason goes to hell's you know has to do with people like you know, possess jumping oh, bodies yeah. and oh, stuff like shocker. that. Cause they like oh, blow Jason up at the beginning of, of the movie, which is pretty fun. Oh man. We went everywhere today. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. So many. No, uh, man, that's so funny. I, oh, gosh. All right, man. We talked about a lot of shit tonight. <laughs> Sorry. We went all over sure the board is. fans. Thanks for listening. Probably a really long episode, which is going to be awesome. Um, Joshua, thank you for being here. No, thank you so much for, for having me. Yeah, uh, for sure. If I may do a quick plug, I'm doing... Oh, uh, go for it. Yeah, thanks. Thank yeah, you. go for it. Uh, you know, I do virtual uh, town halls, and so since we're uh, talking about all this Halloween stuff, um, that's what my theme is going to be on Sunday. Uh, so I'm having my wife on there, and Patrick Rea, who's the... Dir- or hopefully it's Patrick. Um, I haven't got the confirmation, but that's the plan. So, you know, my wife was just in I Am Lisa. Patrick was the director of I Am Lisa. We're going to have some other people have done kind of horror stuff like that. And it's going to be kind of a fun show talking about horror stuff and sort of art as a means of uh, politics and uh, self-expression. And so if, if anybody are fans of uh, more horror stuff, you know, check it out. Yeah, for sure. We'll put some but, information on there for yeah, you. Yeah, and, and again, thank you so much for, for having me. I mean, like, oh, yeah, you know, dude. I love uh, talking movies and Yeah, I know, for stuff. sure, man. I'd love to have you come back on again sometime and... You know, yeah, if you have a, if you have a show about synthesizers, I'm your guy. Oh man, <laughs> <laughs> we have to wait for Tobias on that one. I don't yeah, know I shit could. about that, but All right. no, for sure we'll have you definitely back on again when Appreciate Tobias it. is here. But you know, thank you so much for your time, sir. Absolutely. Not drink Nerd Network much. Podcast. There you go, Julian. Good job. All right, that's our cue to get out of here. All right, everybody, thanks for listening. Don't forget to subscribe, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, all that other bullshit. We have a button for that now. <laughs> Please subscribe to our podcast. Thank you, hey. and we're out of here.